In lessons 18 through 20, we talked in a general way about the processes of substitution and elimination, typically using halogens as our leaving groups. However, there are a variety of other leaving groups that are important for substitution reactions that are actually run in the laboratory. And so in this series of webcasts, we're going to take a look at some of these common leaving groups and also some common nucleophiles that you might encounter in laboratory work. The first one we're going to look at is the hydroxyl group. You'll see from the box down here that substitution reactions of alcohols are typically disfavored thermodynamically. This has something to do with the high bond strength of the carbon-oxygen bond, but there's also an analogy we can make to acid-base chemistry that can help us understand how leaving groups operate in a general way. And so I invite you to pause the video now before I move to the next slide and think a little bit about the relationship between acidity and basicity and leaving group ability. There is a direct relationship between the ability of an acid to dissociate a proton and the ability of a leaving group to leave. Both depend on the stability of an anion A-. And so if we write out the equilibrium for a typical acid, what we see is that A- appears on one side of the equation. And if we write out a similar equilibrium for a leaving group leaving, what we'll see is exactly the same thing, except carbon and a carbocation have replaced hydrogen and H+. And so in both cases, the stability of A- is critical. What this means, and what's convenient for us, is that we can use the pKa's of a variety of acids to predict the leaving group ability of the conjugate bases of these acids. What we typically say is that acids with a pKa less than zero have conjugate bases which we would consider good leaving group. These are conjugate bases that are very stable in their dissociated forms, and so they have a tendency to want to break away from carbon, just as they have a tendency to want to break away from a proton in the case of acidity and basicity. You'll notice that water is conspicuously missing from this list of good leaving groups whose conjugate acids have pKa's less than zero. In fact, the pKa of water is all the way up at 15.7, and so we can see that it's clear that hydroxide, the conjugate base of water, should not be a good leaving group. However, interestingly, note that the conjugate acid of water, H3O+, plus or hydronium, does have a pKa, which is in the acceptable range for a good leaving group. And so if we could get another proton onto a hydroxyl group, generating H3O+, plus, or something analogous to it, then we could potentially make an alcohol into a good leaving group. This idea is commonly applied in practice when we want to turn an alcohol into a good leaving group in the presence of a nucleophile to do a substitution reaction. So as I said before, protonation of the alcohol now generates a positive oxygen, and here we see that water is essentially going to act as our leaving group, and the conjugate acid that we use for reference is H3O+, plus, whose pKa is negative 1.7, which falls in the acceptable range for good leaving groups. And so it's clear that this leaving group, H2O+, plus, is indeed a good leaving group. If the counterion that accompanies H+, plus is a good nucleophile, then what we observe overall is a substitution reaction. And so if that anion is nucleophilic, it can add in the electrophilic carbon, displacing water as a leaving group, and generating our final product. Ethers can actually exhibit a similar kind of reactivity under acidic conditions. Protonation of an ether generates a good leaving group in the form of an alcohol. An attack by the conjugate base of the acid used to protonate leads to the formation of an alkyl halide and the alcohol leaving group. In this top example, we see that because the carbocations that could form would be unstabilized, primary or methyl carbocations, this goes by an SN2 type process. However, if we can form stabilized carbocations, such as a benzyl carbocation in this case, then this process can also go by an SN1 type mechanism, in which protonation and dissociation precede attack by the nucleophile to form the alkyl halide. In the next webcast, we're going to take a look at a few more ways to activate alcohols as good leaving groups. In contrast to the method of protonation, they actually involve transformation of the alcohol into an entirely new functional group, through the use of some reagent. And so, although they accomplish the same goal, they represent an extra synthetic step 
in our transformations of alcohols and preparing them for substitution and elimination.